For section 8.1, we're going to be using a new table, table A-3. It's found under your resource tab in Connect Math. And for this section, we are going to be using the bottom part of the table. As you can see from here, uh, it's the last two lines. It gives different values of Z and different percentages. So for the first percentage at 20%, Z is equal to 0.253. Uh, these are pre calculated results and uh, if you have to calculate any other percentages while you're doing homework just mark them down so you can use them uh, this only has certain ones like 80 90 95 98 99 99.5 etc uh, so some of the homework will require you to use other ones but I'll show you how to do those on the first example find the critical value which is those Z numbers that come from the chart uh, this has two different notations. Uh, you can either have it notated as Z alpha over 2, or I will also refer to it as ZC for critical value. So find the critical value needed to construct a confidence interval with 90%. If you look at the chart, 90% uh, is here on the chart. It's right here. Right there is 90%. And the value is 1.645. That would be Z. So that's what I stated here. From the chart at the bottom, the 90% confidence interval or confidence level corresponds to Z equal to 1.645. And this is a critical value. But let's say 90% was not on the chart. Uh, to calculate it on your own, uh, you use the formula 90 divided by 100. This just converts the 90% to decimal. So that's equal to 0 0.90. You subtract 1 uh, or 9 point, 0.90 from 1, which gives you 0 0.10. So whatever the percentage is, you subtract it from 1. Then you take that subtraction number and you divide it by 2. So here it's 0 0.10 divided by 2, and that comes out to 0 0.0500. 0 0.0500 is going to be looked up on table A2. And from table A2, if you remember, let me scroll back here, table A2, 0 0.0500, I've already found it here. Uh, it's exactly between these two numbers, 0 0.505 and 0 0.495. Uh, in this particular case, if it's exactly between two numbers, you're going to estimate the point in between. So this corresponds to a negative 1.645. And this is exactly what was calculated on table A3 right here at the bottom. Since it comes up negative on table A2, you're always going to make it positive. So you just use the positive number 1.645. In the Connect Math, they use a different thing they subtract it from one but I think it's just easier to remember just to make it positive so let's try another one at 85 percent 85 percent this is not on table a3 so we have to use the formula and once I calculate this for 85 percent you won't have to do it again just mark it on your table so you first convert it to decimal 85 divided by 100 is 0.85 then subtract that from one so 1 minus 0.85 is 0 0.15 then you take the 0.15 divided by 2, so you get 0 0.0750. Uh, zero. This is what you have to look up in the middle of table A2. So if I go back to the middle of table A2 and look that up, uh, it's right here, 0 0.0749. It's not exactly in the middle, but it's closest to 0 0.0479, so I would use minus 1.44. That corresponds to a Z value of minus 1.44. And again, I just make it positive, so the critical value here would be 1.44. Let's try another one, 96%. 96%, again, is not on the chart, so you first convert it to decimal. 96 divided by 100 is 0.96. Subtract it from 1, so you get 0.04. Divide that by 2, it becomes 0 0.0200. You look that up in the middle of table A2. So again, going back to the middle of table A2, there it is right there, 0 0.0202. That corresponds to a negative 2.05. 
And again, I use the positive number, so it comes out to a positive 2.05. That's the critical value for that. So on the homework, you're going to have to do a few of those calculations. As another example, as we proceed with the homework, we're going to use uh, this number to calculate the margin of error for a certain confidence interval. Basically, the margin of error is the interval in which you feel confident that a certain uh, activity is actually going to happen. So for instance, the steps would be to first find the critical value, either from the chart or you have to do the calculations. From Once you have the critical value, you find what's called the standard error. The standard error has this notation sigma x bar, and that's equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. From there, you find the margin of error. That would be the critical value times the standard error number that you just found above. So in this example, given n equals 65 and sigma equals 36, or standard deviation equals 36, find the margin of error for a 90% confidence interval for the mean. So the first step is to find the critical value for 90%. Uh, this is a value at the bottom of table A3. So 90% is one of them that's listed. So 90% corresponds to 1.645. So I don't have to do the formula to figure that out. The standard error is going to be sigma divided by the square root of n. So sigma was 36 in the problem. They said that sample size was 65, so I divide that by the square root of 65. Uh, square root of 65 is 8.062, so I do 36 divided by 8.062, and I get sigma of x is equal to 4.465. So that's the standard error number. Then to get the margin of error, I take the critical value and multiply that by sigma x bar, so I get 1.645, that was my critical value right here, times 4.465, that's this number here, and that becomes 7.345. Just in general, if the confidence level increases, the critical value increases, the margin of error increases. If the confidence level decreases, the critical value would decrease, and also the margin of error will decrease. So if the confidence level went to 95%, again, this is from the previous example, which the co confidence level was 90%, so that's an increase, would the margin of error be larger or smaller? Well, from the above, when the confidence level increases, the margin of error would be larger, because that also increases. Now we're going to construct the actual confidence interval. You will use the margin, or you will use the mean that's given, and add and subtract the margin of error. So pretty much, if I thought of this as a number line, I would have the mean in the middle. I calculate the margin of error, and then I would subtract the margin of error and add the margin of error to the mean, and I create an interval. So this particular problem says to construct a 99.5% confidence interval for the mean, given n is equal to 82, sigma is equal to 6.7, and the sample mean is 39.58. So notice we have a sample mean given in this problem. The actual formula that we're using, which is on your formula sheet, is this right here. Uh, it looks pretty daunting, but it's pretty straightforward. You take the sample mean and you subtract the margin of error. Uh, then you take the sample mean and you add the margin of error. So they're using all these symbols here, uh, but we're going to break it down to step by step. So the first thing is the sample mean is given as 39.58, so I just leave that there. Uh, the critical value at 99.5, again, this is from the table, that 99.5 is there, and the critical value is 2.807, that's from table A3. The standard error, this is a calculation, I take sigma divided by the square root of n, uh, sigma in this problem is 6.7 divided by the square root of 82, the square root of 82 is 9.055, so 6.7 divided by 9.055 is 0.7399. From there, I calculate the margin of error, which is the critical value times the standard error. Critical value is 2.807. Standard error, I just calculated as 0.7399, and I get 2.077. This is the margin of error. If, if I look at the formula up here, the margin of error 
is added and subtracted. That's the number I'm using. So I'm going to take the 2.077, which was my margin of error, and add and subtract it from the sample mean. The sample mean, again, given was 39.58. So I take 39.58 minus 2.077, and then 39.58 plus 2.077. So I get the range of 37.503 to 41.657. On the computer, they want you to round it to two places. So I would put in 37.50 and 41.66. Would the confidence interval be valid? Uh, yes. So what this question is pretty much asking is, uh, if your sample size is larger than 30, yes, it is going to be valid. Uh, so if they give you the uh, population mean, it would also be valid. But this particular problem gave a sample mean, but since the sample size is larger than 30, it's still valid. All right, I'm gonna stop there and do another one.